Amen. Mati made globus la procladia. Marobo shatara bagladabo sila creda. Capodimos in tanara bagladia. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Yeah, we thank God for today. He's a good God who gives us enough days. Long days. Hmm? This he will give you <coughs> enough years to live. Amen. We will live as long as we want. We do not get cut short. Even this life that he gives us every day. We know that it is the will of God for us to live. I mean it is the will of God for us to live. It is the will of God for us to live at such a moment as this. Now, I'll be still talking about Paul's take on tribalism. Uh, last week I explained something a bit about Peter. And we realized that Peter didn't have full revelation. And he was a preacher. He was in charge of the church. And he was still being swayed by people who are even younger than him in age or even spiritually. But when Paul came in after Peter, you know, God had intention for Gentiles to join the kingdom. When Jesus told them they should not go to other nations of the world when he was here and he sent them, you know, he was training them to go and make disciples. And he told them that... Uh, don't go outside Israel. Only go to the lost ship of, of Israelites. When he said that, they thought that the kingdom is only for, for the Jews. And they never also understood that uh, the reason as to why God was with the children of Israelites is because uh, at the fall man lost God or God lost man, whichever it is the two is, positive, two is true and everybody has turned to their own gods every ethnic group has turned to their and God was looking for somewhere to begin because now he has to begin afresh to, to look for a breed through which he will reveal himself on the face of the earth that's how he called Abraham and after he called Abraham he says I will make you into a nation and after making that nation, he was looking for a route through which to bring his son on earth. So that now he will reach the whole world. Now, I, I see people ask so many questions about uh, God being unfair to the tribes. Why is he only concerned with Israelites, even in the Old Testament? God is beginning to solve a problem, a big problem. But he cannot solve a big problem by trying to bring everybody on board. That's why he began with one man. Even today, if God is to begin a change in Marsabit, he will begin with one man. One man. One man is enough. And then the same man, God will help him to raise a team of people to go with him around. That's how he, I, how he came up with Abraham. He says, I will make your name great. And then he says, I will make of you a nation. You know, what does that mean? And that nation is the nation that will carry the word of God. Because all tribes on the face of the earth are not talking about God. I'm not talking about God. They're talking about, they don't even know who created them. They're worshipping everything. So that these people who begin from Abraham will be holding the word of God dear in their hearts. They hold it. And then, through these people, the Messiah comes. And when the Messiah comes, he solves the problem of sin. He dies once for all for, and then he will send others to the whole world. So, but you see, 
the problem with the apostles and the Jews, they, they remained to be superior as far as they are concerned. God does not despise any human being that he has ever created on the face of the earth. I said even last time, even them that somebody like Ruth and others who have come and decided to live by the principles of God, they were taken in. In other words, any human being who is willing to live by the word of God, God does not put them aside. Irrespective of whether they are Jews or, or Gentiles. So they didn't understand that. They just knew that we are superior. Hmm? Our tribe is superior. We are the best. Now Paul comes in. Because God, I realized something there. You know, I was wondering if Paul was not uh, brought in, what would have happened of the gospel? The gospel would have been damaged. Somebody could come. Still, the Jews, the apostles in Jerusalem are still feeling like these people should not join us. In fact, they considered other tribes dogs. In fact, they called them dogs. You know what dogs mean? Hmm? Can you eat from the same plate with the dog? Hmm? Bhakti in our area, they say. <laughs> Defile the thing. That's how they were looking at the whole. Even after Jesus coming and changing things, they were staying there. Staying in the old understanding. Now, chapter number 9 of the book of Acts. Let's go there. Chapter 9 of the book of Acts. Where Paul met God. Where Paul met God. As he was heavily armed. You know, he was heavily armed. Even after the document that gives him the legal right to go and persecute who? Jesus. Not the people of God. It's Jesus. Because when Jesus appeared to him, he had to know that he is not attacking the people. He's attacking him. And this it's like you are you're walking on thorns. You know, if you try me, that's how rough Jesus is. You know? If you try me, have you ever walked on, on thorns? And then you're walking on thorns. Jesus told him, you are walking on, on thorns, my friend. <laughs> you, you don't know me. <laughs> huh? He says, you're not, you're not fighting them. That's why today we don't need to, 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 I don't need to, or you don't need to, to speak too much to support yourself. You don't need to. If he is the one who called you, he will take care of them. <laughs> and uh, so you told Paul, <laughs> and then Paul surrendered. You know, the eyes have already gone. The eyes. The light that came caused this eye not to work. That was just some small punishment, yeah? To help you know that I'm the one who created that eye. Hmm? <laughs> you know the guy is like <laughs> there's a way of walking like uh, I am the only man in this life <laughs> how will these people worship this these Pharisees when that light hit him that light blinded his eyes number one he could not see physically number two the light didn't not only affect their physical eyes it affected also the, the spiritual eyes in fact, it hit him in the inside before outside. You know, you only become blind physically if you're blind spiritually. You only die if you have spiritually died. So, then he was told, go to the person, I will show you. He will pray for you. Now, Ananias was sent, the Bible says, I want you to read this in the name of Jesus. This will happen in March a bit. Verse 10, chapter number 9. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. You're not saying a member of a church. Who? A 
disciple. In other words, can you imagine? God can use anybody who has his word in him to commission anybody for work. Huh? And then is just like, he's not a, a leader in the church. He's not a leader in the church. He's just another, another disciple of Jesus. Let's not say member. But we need to remove that word from our vocabulary. And God just sent, just, he just sent to him. He says, eh? and then he spoke to Anani and he told him, you're going to pray for, for Paul. Hey, Ananias was like, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. My goodness. Can we get such people in our generation who are ready to respond to God anytime? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one man, one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays. Hmm? People who pray always connect. People who pray. What happens to them that don't pray? This one is praying. Ananias is praying in his own time. Paul is praying. And God is connecting both. And Ananias, uh, verse 20 says, And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Hmm? He's seeing in a vision. Amen. May God open our eyes to begin seeing like this man. You see, when that light hit him, he got connected to Jesus forever. <laughs> From that day, <laughs> never went back. And even when he prays, he sees visions. Wow. But that says, and then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard of, by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on, on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So both Gentiles and the children of Israel. Israel but specifically was called for Gentiles. And who are Gentiles? Who are Gentiles? Gentiles are all other tribes on the face of the earth besides Jews. All. Including us here. We are Gentiles. I mean including us, we are Gentiles. So if Jews were attacking you, and then you, you yourself are attacking each other, what does it mean? Assume that we have Jews today. Huh? In other words, all tribes, Paul went to different towns and began churches all over. And he was dealing with all types, all kind of tribes. Even the most wicked ones, the most immoral ones, the most, them that were worshipping idols, all over, all over. The man has an experience of all kind of tribes in bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus. I mean, he has experience enough. Dealing with all tribe kind of tribes. Now, Peter and his team are only dealing with Jews. They're only dealing with Jews. But this man is dealing with all kind of people. And that's why today, as you come into the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you believe in the, Lord, the name of Jesus, uh, there should nothing like tribalism in you. Because the gospel that we have been given is for everybody. Not for a specific tribe. Not for a specific tribe. It's for everybody. And until all these tribes get the word of God, there will be no solution of their conflict every now and then. There will not be a solution. The problem is, we believe in Jesus and then we 
I had one of the, I think that singer was killed in Ethiopia. Is it last year? It's a singer who died. Uh, a singer or a musician. That man was singing and saying that uh, you are or whichever tribe you are coming from is the priority to religion. And that's exactly the, the the idea that Ethiopians hold more, even as they are believers. You know something shocking about Ethiopia is that uh, as powerful as those preachers are, as powerful they are, when the tribal kings come in, because it is, in fact, Kenya is even a fatherly <laughs> than, than Ethiopia. And Ethiopians are the people who, when they begin praying, they'll shock you. They can go, they fast for 30 days. When they come here, they release fire. But not with understanding sometimes, because you realize, after, when the tribalism thing hits, like when we left, came back from Gulehora in 2017, we spoke to over 300 students for a whole week. Those are sp the specific tribes, Guji, and also some Burjis are part of it. After one week, that town was on fire. I was talking to the Bible side. They began killing the spring. The Bible, they, they put it somewhere. All of them, Waleokota. And the one leading them are people who don't believe in God, that are tribal leaders. I know my message is very unpopular in Marsabit. Very unpopular. Even not I spoke yesterday on, on radio. It's very unpopular. But it's the only solution we need to have. Because even our area here, what do we what do we say? The tribe first, the region later. That's why a tribe man can control you, what you do. Even pastors are in the hands of this tribe men. I'm not against the, the setup where they put together, they help one another, Wakati Wabario or Rusi. But the truth is, there's a terrible problem in the land that no man of God has addressed since we entered this town. No one has addressed. Where you have to live under what your tribe leader says, not what Jesus says or what God says. Our fear is more of not being removed from our tribes. We don't fear what God can feel about us. This must a bit. So that if a tribal leader says, we are doing this against that tribe, they are also called, all believers are also called and they are there. Because that is the idea from Ethiopia that is still ruling here. And if you are born again, you should be out of that. Amen. And you should be out. You know, you just have to be out. So that religion comes second, the tribe has come. come. That's why they fight. Every now and then in Ethiopia, they fight. And when, when tribes fight in the government, even if you are born again, and the fight is there, everybody is given gun to go there. And that as the idea has come here. And some of us are being ruled without understanding. I know some parents, our parents came from there. So that now, even if you are sitting in church, you are still looking at somebody with another eye. That is not of God. This prayer we are making is jokes. We are not praying, we are playing. Staying there in that kind of understanding and then you still want to tell us that you want God to come in. No, 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 no. God wants you out. Amen. He wants you out. Paul is a man whose mind has been so transformed, so renewed. He cannot tell you, be renewed in your mind so that you know the will of God if his mind is not renewed. You know, there's a way when you leave the right, the, 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 there's a way you speak. And there's a way you will not speak if you're not living the truth. There's a way you will not speak. 
And even when he sits down, Peter, and tells him, this is very wrong, my friend. <laughs> this is very wrong. He was specifically called to Israel. I was reading to you the other day before I finished. The book of uh, Ephesians. Let's go there. Chapter 3. He says, for this cause, I, Paul, verse 1, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Jesus, I'm a prisoner. His, his message was not popular. I mean, his message was not popular. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, what? Since this period, this time, this time has been, give, has been given to me. So that I minister to who? To you. This period. God has given me grace to minister to you. Gentiles. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote a four in few words. Wherefore, when you heard, when you read, you may, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Just as you read what I have written to you. You need to understand my knowledge or my understanding of the mystery of Christ. He says, I want you to know what I understand. I like this guy. Yeah? He says, I want you to know what I know or what I understand. Eh? Let me repeat that. I think that is very powerful. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And this is this mystery of Christ that was revealed to me. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. He says, I want you to know what has been hidden from other ages, but today has been revealed to us. And specifically to him. Now when you read chapter number 15. Of the book of. Uh, uh, Acts. They are wondering now. What do we do to these people? They have received the gospel. They are trying to give them a lot of condition. Now that you are born again. You are not scared. <laughs> now that you are born again. You know this, is, this salvation is ours. Huh? Now that you are born again. You don't do this, you don't do that, you don't do. Until you know, it reached a point where Paul has to go with some of his team, Barnabas and others, to Jerusalem. So that we sit and discuss. What condition are we going to give? I told you last week. Even the condition that, you know, Paul is more understanding than these apostles in Jerusalem. More understanding concerning this thing. They don't have this. But then it's like now wondering because they're now giving him condition. You know, we began, we began before you. You came the other day. Huh? But the truth is, Paul has made subject himself, he has subjected himself to Apostle Peter and others. In fact, at some point he says, when you read chapter number two of uh, Galatians, he says, I, I felt I should go to Jerusalem and see whether what I have received from the Lord is the right thing. And so that I compare with what they have. I know they are also called of God. I'm also called. We can discuss and see. Am I on the track or I'm not on the track? I want to hear from them. But the problem is, them that is going to have little understanding in the area of his calling. And they are trying to put some condition on how the people should behave now that they are born again. In chapter 15 they discussed. Including not eating food offered to idols. In First Corinthians chapter eight, he says, "Eat them, one. Finish. Tuanga." Huh? In chapter number fourteen in Romans, he says, "The kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. <laughs> it's still talking about." In fact, chapter eight, he says, "I think it should be in chapter eight. Let me confirm that uh, before I go on. It is good to have understanding of the word of God." Praise the Lord. Yeah, it is that. First Corinthians chapter 8. 
He says, they are, they are thinking calling gods. You know what they are calling gods are not God. You know our God is the one that is living in heaven. All the things that they are calling gods are not God. We know even if they are offering these things to idols, he says, the idols are not gods and they have no power. The other day somebody was telling us, should we eat food that our Muslims have, have, are, are, are giving us during Eid and whatever? I say to Natwanga, in fact, if they have come on my ginger, I will go and. It's only that I didn't get time. I, during it, I don't have, really have time to go around. I don't know why. But if I get opportunity, my God, I will settle on it. Thank God for it, my goodness. I ask for more capacity in my stomach. And then I ride on it like a motorbike, I think. <laughs> huh? Because what they're believing is not God. <laughs> Why do you want to think that? This is what Paul was telling them. But in chapter 15, they told him, do not eat food offered to idols. Here he tells them, those people understanding, it's not, Paul is not against Peter and us. He has something that they don't have. Just like today, when I talk about healing, some people feel like I am, I am blowing things out of proportion. Yesterday we went to see Dennis. He's now stronger. We greeted him. Mama Feda told him, my friend, this thing is illegal. Let me kill it. Greet me. Greeting a man with corona. Don't try if your faith is not, has not reached that point. To the end, I will go to the house. 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 We want to see him. I will go to the house. Corona, that's a <laughs> Where is your faith? <laughs> I will ask you like Jesus. <laughs> so that when you see a Corona guy, you stay very, very far. His greetings like this. Don't try this at home. Even you who are listening online. So what, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this, that uh, it is Paul head light. Macodia. You know light? There's something that was revealed to him from above that has liberated him. He does not consider anybody defined. Anybody unworthy. The worst thing about tribalism is to create a picture of somebody created in the image and likeness of God to look very defined. And you don't know Jesus prayed price for that person. If you begin holding on that idea, and this idea is not of God, huh? and then you are singing to us, hey, 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 hey. you haven't praying. Which prayer are you praying? You're outside. That's why you will seek. You see, you will not find God outside love. You will not find God outside love. When there is no love between people, irrespective of how many people are gathering like today in the church, there is no God in that church. No love, no God. The only time that God appears, the Bible says, how beautiful for brethren to stay together in unity. Unity can only be a product of love. There is no unity without love. Because I, you, sometimes you put on uniform. All of us have the same uniform. So we are uniform. Uniformity is not equal to unity also. <laughs> There's another thing. Sometimes we can even put at a choir. Even present worship. I've, I've realized present worship also put on uniform. And some of them don't do at our agree. Our agree. No, they work on a uniform. And uh, I've seen people leave present worship, even wherever I was, wherever I teach. <laughs> putting on uniform, putting together does not mean that you have love. Genuine love comes, sorry, genuine unity comes out of love. And the Bible says, where they have stayed together, chapter 3, chapter 133, verse 3, the Bible says, God has allowed. Has commanded all his blessings there 
He says, all his blessings God has commanded, right there. Where there is love, there is all kind of provision. As far as God is concerned. I mean, there's all kind of... That's why Paul, you know, has this understanding. And he wants everybody... I like the way he speaks in chapter number one of Romans. He says, woe unto me if I will not preach. And one of the things he says in that chapter, he says this, at least I want to have disciples in Rome. In other words, he says, I want to have disciples in every town. Irrespective of which tribe they come from. Hmm? He says, at least, let me have some disciples there. Let me have... On Friday, we met, uh, I think, working, uh, we went to... <laughs> We went to Bobisa for a wedding. And you know, on our, our online class that we began, so people recruited people from wherever they are. So we met in that. So kill them to check up. Oh, where when you didn't know? Where when you where when you Ali? So so we are meeting for the first time and we have been in that class. I know I invited you for that class. You didn't join. And that class has grown to a point now, you see. People are joining from uh, Meru, from Garissa, from Isiolo, from Nairobi, from Moyale. When we meet, when we meet also, uh, they put their photos there. Their video we don't see. So we only came to see each other. Oh, you are the one who was speaking from Garissa. Then the other one Say, Pastor, I am Barile from Meru. So I'm like, ah. But also this one. Then Guyo is this. I think it's good to have disciples everywhere. And then as I was talking with Ali on Friday, I went to pick Ali, brought him here. And then I met several high school students. Pastor, pastor. And then Ali asked me, even these ones are your disciples? Yes. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. I go to Songa. I went to Songa this week yeah, to speak to some youths. I land there. When you are Duka, Duka Kubu Auko, you one of the Saku high students. Pastor Kuja saw that. I think it's good to have disciples everywhere. That is what Paul was doing. He never cared which tribe anybody came from. He knew that Jesus died for them all. Look at what he says. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. I begin from verse 12. It says, For as the body is one, and as many members, and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all made to drink from one spirit. Whether we are Jews. Whether we are Gentiles. We have all baptized into one body. And we are drinking from one spirit. So there's no. Reason as to why. People should be divided. If there is anybody who wants to hear the gospel well. This gospel is not preached in a mass habit. This one I know. Even in our churches. You must come out of your tribe. Amen. And you have to be fit for all tribes. Fit for all tribes. If you will not decide as an individual, one person who is called of God, that I am not going to be identified more with my tribe than Christ. That's what God is waiting for information. There are many people that will go to hell. As many of them as possible. Because they're giving their allegiance not to Jesus. But to something else first. When God is given, when you give all your allegiance to him. That's why the Bible says, work your salvation with fear and trembling. It is not enough just to come to church and you become a Sunday, a Sunday believer. You know a Sunday believer? You just walk there. In fact, you might realize going to, to church once per week is sin. This one I tell people always. That one for the, was the, for the Old Testament. Eating for Sabbath and going to church. 
But in the New Testament, they go to church every day. They pray every day. They hear the word of God every day. And unless you hear the word of God every day, you cannot be delivered from what you were born in. See, like Jews. Like Apostle Peter and others. Were born as Jews. And the mentality they had from the time that they were born is the same mentality they carry, the one of the Old Testament. When Jesus came and introduced something new, they could not understand. In fact, he tells them, even when he was about to leave, how long shall I be with you? Huh? How long shall I be with you? You don't even understand this. Was Paul with Jesus? Who should have better opportunity to understand more than others? Huh? Should be other, these other people. But Paul left all. He was also a Jew. But he was smart in the mind. If your mind is not renewed, God also, also God finds it very hard to use you. Because you will not understand him. You will go and misrepresent God wherever you go. I mean misrepresent him. When you see your tribe men, yes, you sit, you talk. Huh? Like the other day when there was this, this problem. Eh? Eh? And they're also a believer. And then you come to church, you look, unaruka, ruka, apa. That's how jinga one. Your mind has to be renewed. I had some, some, some clips on video, on YouTube. Hato raubasa. Hey, my God. It's very clear. Coming from the mouth of a believer. Who are you lying to? Jesus or yourself? We must decide to stand alone. That's what Jesus says. Count the cost. I am born again and they run to church. And when the reality comes, they disengage themselves from the truth. And they are on the other side. True believers must arise in mass of it. Amen. Believers who cannot be on any side, even when their tribe is pressuring them to do something, they say no. Jesus has pressured me enough, I think. I don't have any pressure from anywhere. <laughs> I hold everybody alike. That's why I want to have disciples from every corner of this land. Thank God I have. Harare, hmm? the other side of uh, all over. I have disciples from every tribe. Very serious ones. And I am working on them day by day. Hmm? Day by day. I'm surprised I appear anywhere in this county. And I have people who come running. The other day I was in Walda. Walda to Litembea. Hey, pastor. Around five of them came running. They, you see, when you do this high school program, you are having so much impact on the whole county. You might not realize that or now. You don't realize when you leave, begin walking around. And you see, wow. You're also here. What if you're bringing all these tribes together by the word of God? All you're teaching them is the word of God. Nothing else. Nothing else. So Paul was dealing with all kinds of tribes. All. And he desires for them to be saved. He prays for them day and night. Do we have such preachers today? Who are praying for the growth of the faith of believers. Even from them that are not from their tribes. Crying. He says, read, read every first chapter of the epistle of Paul. He says, I am on my knees. Laboring in prayer. So that each one of you, from the time I heard that you are born, that's what Paul says. Can we have such preachers in Marsabit? I'm asking that question. Who are crying for every tribe to be, to grow spiritually? That's Paul. That's Paul. Just this thing has been revealed to me. It has been hidden from ages. In fact, it has also been hidden from Paul, Peter, and others. As good as we speak about, you know, there's a way you speak so good of Peter. Just all of us have been baptized in one body. 
we are no longer Jews or Gentiles. Something so shocking that Paul did. This is a man whose mind is renewed. I'll speak about a transformed mind next week. Oh, I'm not here. I know we have another guy. So, but I will see that. The man whose mind has been so renewed, Paul, and me so renewed. My goodness, so renewed. Philemon, you know Philemon? Philemon is a believer in Colossae. He bought a slave by the name Onesimus. And this slave, he bought, you know, they, bought, they buy like, you buy animals today. And you can do to them whatever you want. Philemon was having this guy. He didn't give him any value. For he is born again. Philemon. Born again. In fact, the church at Colossae began in his church, in his house. Churches are happening in the houses. Not, there's not a church like this then. There's a church in his house where Paul began. And Philemon was still holding Onesimus as a slave. He made some mistake. He ran for his life. <laughs> Paul, while he is in prison, wrote that letter to Philemon. And he says, I led him to Christ. He is now no longer a slave. He is equal to me and you before God. Can you see that? He's been running this, this program in his church for a while. But the man is not understanding. He was not even saved on Esimus. Just he has received Jesus. Whatever he lost, I will pay you. Whatever he lost, I will pay you. Now I'm sending him back to you. Receive him as a brother in the Lord. Not as a slave. If you only know how much price Jesus prayed for all human beings on the face of the earth. That's why Paul says, woe unto me if I will not preach. Woe unto me. Because he knows he holds the liberty of all men in his hand. He says, I am your debtor. He says, I am your debtor. He says, I am. Until I release this truth, many people will be in bondage. That's what Paul speaks. And he's putting everybody together. Let me finish by this very powerful words in chapter number 3 of Galatians. May God bring this out in Jesus' name in our land. Until we embrace the light of the word of God, we cannot go anywhere. Look at this. I'm reading from verse 22 to 29. A passage that uh, can give you some light. This is what it says. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. In other words, in the Old Testament, as long as people were living by the law, they were not living by faith. Law simply means, if you do good, good is done to you. If you slap somebody, you'll also be, also be slapped. It is like any good thing that comes to you is because of what you did. There's nothing like grace then. That's why even if somebody sins, they kill him. They don't want to care. He says, before faith appeared, we were under what? Under the law. Before faith appeared. They didn't know what faith is. These are people who are spiritually dead. Faith is of them that are spiritually alert. People who are spiritually dead can only understand the physical things, not the spiritual things. Whatever they see, that's why offering has to be done. Sacrifices have to be done before their eyes. They slaughter some animals. When they see the blood has dripped, they know that their sin is covered. Not like us today who live by faith. How sure that Jesus died on the cross? Yes, I'm sure. It's faith. Faith. I don't have to see Jesus born 
I don't have to go into that house and see him physically. I am alive spiritually. I am born again. My spirit is alive to God. So God speaks to me through my spirit. Not my physical body. But in the Old Testament, it is about the physical. It's about the physical. Verse 24 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So it says, it's like the law was only keeping us as we wait for who? Jesus to come and justify us. The law. But after that, faith is come. We are no longer a schoolmaster. Who is a schoolmaster? The one te that teaches you about God is law. Like for example, when uh, Moses was leading the of Israel in the wilderness. They did not know what is good and what is bad. They didn't know. I can slap you, a very hot one. And I don't know that it is sin. I can steal. And I do not know that stealing is. I can covet. I can worship idols. And I do not know that this is. The law was presented to reveal to you what sin is. How dangerous is it to live under the law? This thing, that's why the first, the first commandment that was brought was the first, the ten commandment. Hmm? Do not do this, do not do this. And the more people are told don't, the more they do it. They don't have ability in them. So the law, the work of the law is to teach you what is right and what is wrong. You know, if you are, your mind is sound even today, you don't need to be taught about the law of Kenya. Many of us don't even know. We are surviving by grace, yeah? You only begin understanding the law of Kenya when you begin fighting with somebody and you find yourself at the court of the law. Then you ask the lawyer, what does he say? You are living without... <laughs> the law is not made for you. <laughs> so Paul is saying, he's telling this, you see, there are people who came to the Galatians and begin teaching them the law. They say, even if you are born again, you have to live by the law. You have to do this. Paul is telling them, no! It's not like that. The law was only there as we are waiting for Jesus to come. And when Jesus comes, he says, when Jesus comes, then the law is put aside. He's explained to these people. These are the people, this is Janzia verse 1, because out of here is a chin. Foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? That's how the first verse begins. Are you want to, do you want to hear that? They are foolish because they don't understand the law. And what has happened in the New Testament. And the people who are believing by the law are still dragging them in in the law. It says, but after that, after faith come, is come, we are no longer under schoolmaster. Verse 26 says, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There are Jews in this Galatian church. There are Gentiles in this Galatian church. Yes, you are all children of God. All, not some. Yes, you are all children of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In other words, you know, until today I wonder why we are still identified with our tribes. I still wonder. I mean, I still wonder. Even in Marsabit, I still. Why am I identified as a Burchi? As all of you have been baptized in Christ, have put on what? Christ. In other words, when somebody see you, you should see Christ, not a Borana, a Burchi, a Gabra. No. All of you. So you are in Him. So it's outside you. If you are in him. All of you he says. And then he says. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. And then he says. And if you be Christ. Then are you Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed. What did God tell him? The first day he called Abraham. 
Come out of your father's house. Come out of your tribe. Come out of your country. Three things. The tribe is there. He says, now you are Abraham's seed. Abraham is not of any tribe now. In fact, the Bible says, chapter number 11 of Hebrews, he went looking for a country hmm, that the founder and the design of it is God. Meaning, it's not a kind of country because God don't come out of your country. He, we went looking. Let me read that one as I finish. I don't know how many times I finished today. Let me just read that. And then I finish for you. The Bible says in verse 8, chapter number 11, By faith Abraham, when he was called out to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, he went out not knowing where whither he went. Verse 9 says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the house with him of the same promise. Verse 10 says, For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? God. He looked. In other words, he's looking for a nation that is founded on the word of God. And he became the foundation of that nation by himself getting the word of God, living by it. Not a, a country that is founded on different tribes. He worked out of his tribes, his tribe, Chaldeans. Those ones were the, 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 most, the biggest problem to Israelites. Even after, after, even later when you hear, when you see Daniel, God, they go into Babylon and whatever, those ones are Chaldeans from which Abraham was brought. And they were still fighting. Israelites were being fought by everybody around. Because this is a unique nation founded on the word of God. He says, the Bible says what? For he looks for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? Is God. He refused to call himself a Machaldeans. Those who worship the, the moon. He says, I worship the living God. Paul says, if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed. And you are here according to the promise. And look at his understanding. If Abraham himself refused to be called by the very tribe he was born from. And he looked for what God can call him. Huh? He was looking for how the word of God can found his life. Today many of us are founded by, our tribes are founded for information that is not of God. But we are still bowing to them. Leaders who are not spiritual in any way. Leaders who do not even know God. They are telling you we do this, we do that. You are following them. All the tribes in this land. And the word of God we put aside. Look at the understanding of Paul. So deep. I mean so deep. Praise the Lord. I think that is enough for today. That is the understanding of Paul that even made his ministry to be wider than all the other tribes, sorry, all other apostles. He came later, but he did most. Why? He embraced all the humans on the face of the earth as people who deserve the gospel of all Jesus Christ. Marsabi today needs more of the word of God like never before. I mean more. But Sabi today needs more. And if we can, if believers in the church can come together and choose to liberate themselves from their tribes, then they can easily liberate Marsabi from tribe. As long as you are inside them, there's no solution you have for them. Even if you are praying 40 days fasting and you are still inside there, Father, we give you glory in the name of Jesus. At such a moment and time, you have given us opportunity to be existing in Marsabit. 
Lord, we choose to be a solution to this land. We choose to be a solution in the name of Jesus. I mean, we choose to be a solution. We choose to speak this truth until it liberates the hearts of men. You told the Jews who believed in you in chapter number 8 of Matthew verse 20, 31. The Bible says, And to the Jews that believed on him, the Bible, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We want to understand our identity in you, Jesus. Our identity. So that we are not going to be identified by our first birth. But the second birth. And this takes commitment to this information. In the first place to learn. And secondly to begin living it out. That is what makes us unique in Marsabit. Even more than others around us. We are praying for the grace. To speak this forth. Boldly. Everywhere in this land. Lord, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We can give to the Lord. We can give to God. As we finish our service in Jesus' name.